Hey everyone, it's your buddy Graphic back with another video, and today we're going to jump into each individual legendary bow that you are able to get in New World, how to get them, and which ones are the strongest. So we're going to jump through if you guys are bow users, this is definitely a video you aren't going to want to miss. Jumping into this video, guys, like I said, we are going to take a look at every single possible legendary bow and where to actually grab them from. So we're going to start off with just a few, and I did choose bow this time around because we did do a vote here. So will you be using more strength, dex, intelligence, or focus-based weapons on release? So most of you guys said dexterity, and I would assume with that, you are going to have a lot of bow users, you know, dexterity being a bow's major, major uh, scaling there I, I do want to talk like i said about these bows though so let's jump into the very first one obviously like i said tier five gear score between 500 and 600 as a possibility for creeping recurve creeping recurve is a very very solid option if you guys are looking for a late game bow because it does have that 24 to 30 dexterity um you know you have the i'm going to skip out by the way on the gems and socketed in them because we can you know always change those out so you, uh those are kind of irrelevant in this video specifically but you know you also have the Keenly Jagged, so on crit cost bleed that deals 7% weapon damage damage per second for 10.5 seconds. That is a 10.5 second cooldown as well, so not very long there uh, for a cooldown. Basic attack hits trigger a nature chain that bounces between close targets, 2 second cooldown, and then the Keen 11.2% critical chance. So this is actually one of the best bows out there. Um, it's not the best, but it's definitely, like I said, one of the best bows out there because of a couple different reasons. Obviously, that bleed's going to stack up quite a bit, and the cooldown's not too, too long or too terribly bad on it. A 7% weapon damage per second for 10.5 seconds adds up quite a bit. Uh, we actually see as well the Keen 11.2% critical chance going to be very, very strong as well. And uh, we also, by the way, if you kind of stack Keen with the Keenly Jagged, that works perfectly together because you're going to want crits to actually apply that bleed, and you have your crit chance going up. So this Creeping Recurve actually works very, very well together. I do want to click into it and actually see where we can find it and where does it drop. So a lot of people asking about where do specific weapons drop. And if you go to uh, Dropped By, it will actually tell you the bosses of which that can drop it. So we have Folgda, we have Forkos, and we have Texodus. So we can actually click on each one of these bosses and you can see what dungeon these are or what level they are. And uh, so this is actually an Eden Grove Swamp Dryad Archer and it has it as one of the possible loots from those uh you know eden grove archers so very very cool to see as it is in like i said that eden grove dungeon that uh you know is going to be called the genesis or garden of genesis we also have four coast so level 66 mob here as well this is going to be another one in the garden of genesis and then taxidus uh, i'm not sure if i'm exactly saying this right but this is a dungeon mini boss in the garden of genesis so you can actually get the Creeping Recurve in the Garden of Genesis, one of the strongest bows out there. That's going to be a level 60 dungeon, a very hard dungeon to actually complete. So keep that in mind. So it is going to be a late game, obviously, bow. It is uh, obviously a tier 5 legendary, uh, you know, a possibility of getting that 600 gear score. So, you know, you should have known it was going to be a, you know, late game item. But, you know, all these are going to be late game level 60, really, bows that you are going to be looking for. We also have Herald Signal Fire. So this is a very, very solid one as well. 16 to 20 de uh, dexterity. We do have a little bit of intelligence, so 8 to 10 intelligence. 50% of damage is converted to fire. That is going to be the uh, gem socketed. Like I said, we're going to kind of skip past gems, but we do have chain fire, so basic attack. It's trigger a fire chain that bounces between close targets. We have vicious, so 11.2% critical damage, and on critical, gain 15.8% in power for 5.3 seconds. Another very, very strong item, by the way. Uh, it's great to see all these strong items coming into the game because there's a lot of different options that means uh, for bows you can use late game. And you can actually see they're dropped by a ton of different mobs here. Uh, I'm not going to go through each and every mob because we'd be here for quite some time. But one thing I want you guys to do as well is if you go to New World Database, you can actually see a bunch of different uh, information here. So going into the database here, we go to, let's say, um, let's go to uh, weapons. If we go to weapons, we go to then we go to bow. We can actually search by, like I said, rarity and tier five. So you can see all of these right here. So we were just on Herald Signal Fire. I want to kind of jump into it here on this website a little bit more because, like I said, when you go down to comments, sometimes you'll have a comment posted there about where to find it. And sometimes also if we go to, um, here we go. 
Now, on this one, you can see it loans tracker bow. You can actually see found in loot containers. So this one's found in Outpost Rush. So it is going to give you that exact spot or location. So that's why I kind of skipped over to there for this one. But you can see that it is actually a drop from many, many different places. I'm not going to jump into all of these. Like I said, it's definitely a very, very solid bow, though, that you can actually find. We're going to wait to get a you know better tracking on where it can actually drop. Uh, but for now, it looks like a very, very solid weapon, and it can drop in many different areas. I do want to jump into the lone tracking bow, or the lone tracker's bow, because we have yet to find the best bow in the list. And there is one, by the way, that does top every other bow, in my opinion, in a lot of people's opinion. But the lone tracker's bow is another fairly solid option. 20 dexterity, 10 constitution, empty socket for you guys as well. So you gain 1.4% of your damage as health. So lifesteal is involved with this, so it's a very, very cool aspect of the bow so if you're kiting you continually gain health while you're kiting as long as you're hitting your damage you also see basic attack hits trigger a nature chain that bounces between close targets that's only a two second cooldown and then fortifying rain of arrows hitting a target with rain of arrows grants fortify on self increasing damage absorption by 10 or sorry 19 percent or 22 seconds so a very very solid bow and like i said with this one unfortunately is going to be in outpost rush which is going to be uh, fairly hard to grab until, like I said, late game. You're not going to be able to prepare yourself for this, really. You're going to have to jump into Outpost Rush and win uh, and get a uh, Outpost Rush cash. And you actually, like I said, you don't need to really win, but you can see all the possible drops from Outpost Rush being at 502. So a massive amount of loot you can get from there. So it's going to take a lot of grinding to get this specific bow. I do want to jump down to the Slayer Crossbow. So the Slayer Crossbow, 30 dexterity. We also have a socket on all of these, by the way. And we have life stealing yet again, vicious with that 11% critical damage. And then we have the 14% headshot damage. So this is another great option. A very, very cool looking bow as well, I must say. It's a purple bow. And if we look at the dropped by, it's the Rosalind. So Rosalind, uh, if you guys don't know much about Rosalind, we can actually click in and it'll show you guys all the possible drops from uh, Rosalind. Um, it's a hostile uh, mob out in the obviously era boss, I should say. Uh, but, you know, it's one of those things where you can jump through each and every a bow and look at where they're dropped from what you know bow you're kind of aiming to go for and swift approach is next on the list so this is one i'm not going to spend too much time on because i don't think it's the best out there at all i think it's strong but uh definitely not the strongest of the legendaries so we're going to skip past that we're going to go to true strike this one's another legendary bow that has some potential behind it but it does have when you kill something gain 15 percent in power for five seconds so you are going to have that really idea of you need to take something out to continually put more damage out there this is a fairly solid option. Like I said, it does have the chain ice. Uh, so actually basic attacks trigger that ice chain bounce between close targets and the Vorpal 14% headshot damage. But you are going to get this from the Dark Spriggan cache. If you guys go to the Dark Spriggan, they have 50 drops available to you guys on the Dark Spriggan. And some legendaries definitely in there. A lot of solid legendaries, that is. Let's jump on, though, back to the... What are we on now? I think we just did Swift Approach, so we're on True Strike. I think we just did True Strike, actually, as well. So I think we're on Warforged. Let me see here. True Strike's pretty much a uh, you know basic one like we just talked about. Like I said, the win, you kill something, gain 15% in power for five seconds. So I think we just talked about that. We are on the Warforged Compact Battle Bow. By the way, we haven't found the best bow quite yet. It is coming up very, very soon. But the Warforged Compact Battle Bow is definitely another great option. 30 Constitution, though. No dexterity on it, which is not a big deal. You just can uh, you know, change your attributes out or uh, attributes, whatever you guys like to call them. You can actually, you know, just take 30 away from Constitution and put 30 on Dexterity. So that's not a bad deal as long as it's in, you know, Constitution or Dex if you are running a Dex build. But you can see 11% critical damage on critical gain, 30% haste, 2 second. Uh, cooldown is 10 second, by the way. And then you have 93% more accuracy. I don't think this is a big deal. I don't love this bow just because of one thing specifically. The keen speed is not very strong. 30% is a fairly sp solid, uh, you know, speed up. But you have to remember after you're done, attacking it does take about even literally a second to start moving again at regular pace so then you're getting that 30 percent haste for what maybe one second not a big deal in my opinion i do want to jump though into we have the creeping recurve we talked about that one a very solid option we already talked about that like i said inherent truth going to be one away from the lazarus bow lazarus bow going to be the big one that a lot of people are going to love but here we have the inherent truth with 30 dexterity 15 percent damage outgoing and uh healing while at full health by the way Light and heavy attacks reduce your active weapon cooldowns by 2.8%. This is going to be a very, very solid one for duels. Keep that in mind. Uh, just because that continuous, really, cooldown reduction. Light and heavy attacks deal 9.5% more damage. Yet another reason to continue that light and heavy attacks. We have reduces max cooldown by 2.8%. So this is going to be a just spam of, really, abilities as quickly as possible with Inherent Truth. And I think that's a very, very 
cool concept. Definitely something that could be used in war very, very easily. I think this will be maybe the best war build uh, using this in, I guess, I guess I should say best bow war build. Uh, but I do want to jump back, and this is going to be the obvious dual open world strongest uh, really bow out there. You can see the crit chance, crit damage, and the 9.5% more damage on light and heavy attacks. Going to be absolutely insane, just straight up damage. Lazarus bow, definitely going to be dropped by Scylla, by the way. If you guys don't know who Scylla is, you can actually click on in here and see that Scylla is found in... Let's see if it shows you. I want to see if it shows you before I say it. It is actually going to be found not in the Garden of Genesis, but it is going to be found in Reekwater's dungeon. And that's going to be... Uh, for some reason, I cannot think of the actual dungeon after uh, thinking of this. So let's go view it on the map. And let's zoom out a little bit here. Uh, I was thinking of Lazarus Instrumentality. Sorry for that, guys. But Lazarus Instrumentality, Instrumentality, you do kill Scylla, one of the harder bosses in that entire dungeon. And it does drop, like I said, or have the potential to drop that Lazarus bow. Very, very strong bow. And then the last bow is going to be that Regent's bow. Not a strong, strong pick out of everything here. This is probably one of the worst legendaries out there, so I'm not going to jump too much into that. But Inherent Truth is going to be a great war, uh, a bow for war. And then we have a Lazarus bow for, you know, open world and just uh, maybe even duels just for that straight up damage or DPS. I would I do want to jump into Inherent Truth. You can see here Shardis is the uh, def the boss that can actually drop this. And you can see Shardis is an elite boss, by the way. And so this is something you can actually farm for if you view it on the map. And it does bring us to the map here. Uh, you can see that this is, like I said, in Lazarus Instrumentality, another you know dungeon that we've just talked about. So Shardis and, like I said, also having Scylla. This is Lazarus Instrumentality is definitely one of the best for bows because you have two different opportunities there for legendary bows that are just absolutely insane. So keep that in mind, guys. Lazarus Instrumentality is going to be one of the best spots to farm for your legendary bows out there. And I just wanted to kind of give a brief overview of some of the best bows out there in the, uh, you know, Eternum altogether. So just some bows to look forward to using, and I'll see you guys all on Eternum. Yeah.